Hey guys, it's Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm back again with part two of my tire series. And yes, this one is genuinely a big one. Think about this, what factors inform what's your tire choice in width? What factors actually tell you what's the right tire for your bike? Is it just literally the, the tire that came on your bike? Are you really just gonna use the tire that came with the wheel set or with your bike to ride in all conditions? To me, that's crazy. How can you just rely on what came with the bike? Yeah, it may be in principle like, you know, a cyclocross bike with decent cyclocross tires, but it may easily be the wrong tires on there. It may be a decent road bike with what the manufacturer thinks is the best tire. Maybe it's a 23, maybe it's a 25 millimeter. Who knows? But the point is, are you looking? Are you looking and are you using some information to make the right tire choice. And if you are using information, what is it? Advice that you've been given from a friend, a racing colleague? Look, I'm not dissing those areas. I'm not dissing friends giving you advice about your tire. That's great. But there are lots of factors that are gonna determine whether you've got the right tire. Have a think about this for a second. Okay, we all know that the total weight, that's yourself, your equipment, your bike, even the wheels themselves, are gonna have a strong influence on tire pressure, right? But also tire choice. Secondly, what about the rim, the wheel itself? The wheel characteristics are gonna determine the actual tire choice. If you're interested in aerodynamics, you can use that 105% rule, which is that the width of the rim should be roughly 5% at its widest, wider than the widest point of the tire. Another way to say that is that the width of the tire should be like two, three millimeters, maybe four millimeters smaller than the widest point of the rim, particularly on those modern toroidal rims. So we've got weight, we've got wheel type and wheel size. We've got, does it fit in the frame itself? Obviously that's a fundamental. We've also got grip. We've talked about the contact patch in the past, but yes, under low grip situations, or when you're putting a lot of power down, or when you're going really fast, like downhill, you know, bad combination, downhill, in rough conditions, in the wet, at high speed, you're gonna want maximum grip, right? So you're gonna want maximum contact patch. So generally, that's gonna favor a wider tire. As things go, you know, all other things being equal, it's gonna favor a slightly wider tire. And although our tire pressure calculator does favor a model where you look at the balance front to rear, I will admit that going down under heavy braking or just when you want that full control over the front wheel, you probably want to choose 50-50. In other words, equal tire size front and rear and not too narrow on the front. Otherwise, that contact patch might just release and you can go skidding out. Okay, so we've got weight, we've got wheel characteristics, we've got whether it fits in the frame, we've got grip and we've also got safety. But here's the big one, guys. What about road conditions? Now, if you've got a fairly simple road like typical tarmac, then maybe it's not that hard to estimate it. And I have to admit, that's the kind of rubric, that's the kind of idea that we've used in the past. We've gone, okay, let's work out tire pressure or tire type based on typical road conditions. But here's the thing today, and this is brand new, and genuinely, I'm surprised no one has done this before. What if you've got different road conditions? I'm talking about different road conditions in one ride. Okay, let's take a crazy example, Paris-Roubaix. Paris-Roubaix is classically, you know, one of the most difficult one-day stage races in cycling. Why is it so difficult? Because the surface is a nightmare. You know, you've got rough, dirty conditions, you've got some gravel sections, but obviously you've got the cobbles, and the cobbles in 2019 made up about 21% of that race. So here's the thing, guys. How do you adjust your tire choice so that you're racing optimally over mixed conditions? You're not racing actually all gravel when you may want maybe a widest possible tire within limits. You know, you don't want to go crazy because of the weight and because of the aerodynamics. But in terms of those suspension impedance losses, wider and relatively humble lower pressure will smooth out a lot of those micro bumps that we talked about before, you know. So that's definitely a model you can use for just rough surfaces. 
But what if it's a MIG surface? where you've got some typical tarmac, you might even have some smooth tarmac, and then you've got maybe some gravel, and then you've got some cobbles. Yeah, exactly like Paris-Roubaix. What do you do there? Now this is where we're going to get really clever today. Now this is how we're going to solve this problem. Think about it mathematically. What we want is the tyre that rolls best over all of those conditions combined, right? Okay, all of those conditions combined. Now if we take each section individually as a proportion, let's say start with typical tarmac, we can have you know, a reasonable guess from not just those lab-based dynamometer studies that we were talking about last time, but also real-world studies where they took you know, a rider, a bike, different tires into the real world and they rolled over that surface and they looked at the rolling resistance in each of those conditions. And that's exactly the kind of test that's been done by Jean Heine or by Josh Portner at Silka. He actually talks about it doing outside of his office, doing rolling resistance tests on different surfaces. Okay, so come back to this scientific analysis. What I'm saying is, you can work out from their tests broadly where the optimum like tipping point in tyre pressure, and actually that informs tyre size as well, but go with me here, tyre pressure initially, where the optimum tipping point is, and it kind of on a lot of these surfaces looks like a tick, because there comes a point, an inflection point, where you've got the optimal pressure and then you basically fall off a cliff and things start deteriorating really fast due to those suspension or impedance losses. So you've got this kind of tick effect. Now the actual dynamics, actual mathematics, the actual shape of the curve will depend exactly on the surface you know, and other variables as well which are a little bit hard to model but stay with me here. This gives us a ballpark figure for typical tarmac. So you've got your optimal range for typical tarmac, let's do the same for rough tarmac, let's do the same for smooth tarmac, let's do the same for gravel, let's do the same for cobbles, and if anybody can send me the data on these kind of real world rolling resistance, yeah, I'd love to see sand, I'd love to see grass, I'd love to, I'd love to see you know other conditions that we may ride in, because what this enables me to do is perform a little bit of maths genius behind the scenes and come up with a calculator that will tell you the best tyre choice for a variety, an impossible variety of conditions, okay? And by the way, if anybody wants to replicate this method, I will say it is actually slightly harder than I'm letting on. Because if you think about it, it's difficult to model exactly how long you spend on each surface because it's not, you know, 20% on gravel, 20% on tarmac is not the actual time spent. Okay, boom guys, now we have the optimum pressure, just roughly, depending on the surface, and yeah, there are nuances that may be impossible to put on a spreadsheet, but we have the optimum pressure at a given tire size for a variety of conditions, right? So now we can backwards calculate based on the rider mass, based on also safety concerns because let's say if you're too light with too low a pressure, you're going to have problems with maybe that uh, tyre coming off the rim. And if you're too heavy with let's say too narrow a tyre, then you're going to obviously have high pressure problems in that tyre exceeding the manufacturer's tolerances. So yes, we do go through like a safety loop check and then that will push you in one direction or another if you're exceeding extremes in choice of tyre specs here, okay? But basically what I'm saying here is we've got this awesome calculator and I'm putting it out there today. We're calling it Surface Matcher. So it's the Fast Fitness Tip Surface Matcher. Here's the link. It's actually really simple. It's fft.tips slash surface. If you follow that link, you'll get this free surface matcher tire calculator. Just a heads up, that does require log on on Google and it does require sometimes Google Chrome to really work well. But we will convert that via our friends at cyclingapps.net into an open access version really soon. Links below, guys. So what I'm saying in total today, guys, is what starts with a really simple question. What's your optimal tyre size? Actually, pressure as well. Turns into something horrendously complicated once you start to put in all the nuances that we need into that kind of calculation. Body weight, bike weight, bike type, bike fit, wheel size, wheel fit, 
safety considerations, surface type, once you do that, I will put it to you, it's almost impossible for anyone to give you an optimal recommendation based on their knowledge of this area, even if they are very knowledgeable. I'm not dissing or taking away from anyone who knows this area inside out, but what I'm saying is, can you hold all those calculations in your head and give somebody an accurate recommendation? I don't think it's possible because until I created this calculator, I couldn't do it either. I was giving like approximate recommendations. Okay, one last thing, I'm bound to be asked, does the pressure recommendation in the surface calculator tie up to the pressure recommendation in the custom tire pressure calculator? And I will say there are differences and there are kind of a couple of reasons for that. In the surface matcher tire pressure recommendation, that is actually finding a pressure suitable for the optimal tire size and based on optimal rolling resistance across a range of surfaces, yeah? So it's kind of favoring rolling resistance regardless of comfort, really. Whereas in the custom pressure calculator, yes, rolling resistance does come into it, but it's basically based on data from bicyclerollingresistance.com and others who've done the dynamometer or lab-based tests. And actually, they also favor a kind of drop model, like a certain percentage drop, like the 15% drop in the tire, and they favor through that a combination of rolling resistance and comfort. And I also built in aerodynamics to that calculation. So the two don't come up with exactly the same figure, but looking at the two side by side with quite a few examples, they're broadly similar. You know, they're not too dissimilar, but what I'm saying is they are achieving a result with a slightly different method. If you want to think about it like this, surface calculator is real world mixed conditions, any conditions that we've got in databases which have looked at suspension surface losses. The other one is more hypothetical based on, let's say, near optimal conditions or typical tarmac. So typical tarmac, you might be better going with the pure pressure calculator the any conditions like okay i want to race dirty kanza what's the situation well there's lots of considerations there huge differences in you know like flint based gravel that goes along there Differences in the wheel choice, you know, like the new NV G, what is it, G27, they're coming out with G23 and G27. You know, the width of those wheels is 31.5 millimeter. You know, the bead is 23 or 25 millimeter. These are hugely wide wheels accommodating large tires, typically 32, 35, 40, 42. You know, tires which will roll over those surfaces provide loads of basically inbuilt pun puncture protection. <laughs> okay guys, as you can see, I can't stop talking about this area and I will admit, I think we're onto something here that's really good because I think we're genuinely the first ones ever to give a model, a complex model of tire choice and tire pressure based on surface conditions and basically that's what it's all about. You know, surface conditions cannot be ignored. That's why I'm going on about it for ages today Okay, now I'll shut up with an appeal. Check out our social media. Check out our Strava account. Check out our new Instagram account. Check out also our Patreon subscriptions. They get these videos in advance, along with a lot of exclusive, more technical videos, which are not on here. But above all, thanks for watching, guys. Give me a like or share if you like this video. If you don't like it, give me a comment. Tell me where you think I've gone wrong. Maybe I can improve things for next time. I'm not against that. Take care guys, until next time, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips signing out. See you in the next video.